Hello everyone, my name is Shin, and this is my first YouTube video. I hope that everybody enjoys it and can learn something from it. The uh, thing that I'm going to be going over today is for a passenger uh, train system controlled through the circuit network. The uh, first time I saw this was on Exterminator's video that he did with Mojo D, Colonel Will, and Mad Zuri. And I believe one of those three uh, were the original ones to design this or where I saw it. And um, what I did was kind of pause the video where it was showing this and kind of tried to figure it out from there. I uh, really wanted to know where or how that it worked versus just trying to stamp down a blueprint from that game or someone else's. So... Um, going to go over this. I'll start at the uh, beginning of the network and kind of work through toward the end. Some people, I guess, well, let me go through this first. I guess some people may wonder why you would need something like this. And what I found it very useful for is in larger bases where things are very spread out. And instead of having to run uh, such long distances, you're able to just hop on a train and kind of relax until you get there. Just um, instead of running through trees and uh, avoiding places and the, you know following the, the train tracks or whatever the case might be, it just uh, seems more efficient and more uh, relaxing, I guess, in a game to be able to just wait until you get there instead of having to manually get there. So I think it's a time saver too when you look at how long it takes to build it even once you just stamp it down with a blueprint I'm not sure it really necessarily equals out but I think that it's made up for just in the convenience of it uh, most often I'm able to carry anything I need for most builds either in my inventory or in conjunction with the train so that's even with just the one carriage wagon there. So uh, let me go ahead and get into this uh, circuit. And so the first point is the rail signal where we're looking at either red, orange, or green. In this case, we're taking a red signal. Um, down here, of course, we'll be getting an output for, uh, of a green signal since there's no train here at this time. So from there, it is connected to the inserter however that's just an attachment point it's not really part of the network the input is on the combinator here and as you can see on the right hand side there we have an input signal of one red and down here we have an input of one red and one green okay so from there this red wire is attached over to the second combinator and to this third combinator so let's follow this across here. Well, we'll look at this here. So the red signal, if it's less than one, they're going to output a one. So in this case, we're equal to a one. So it's not outputting a one. All right. So that's why we see an input signal, but no output signal. So over here, we're looking for an input signal of greater than one and of course in this particular case we don't have that we have a input signal equal to one so again we're not putting an output signal at all so that means that this combinator here is not getting that one all right and so we are not greater than zero so again it is not outputting a one now, from here, it's attached. Note that it's attached on the input side. Okay, so we're still getting that one over here. All right, we're getting that input signal of one. All right, which is greater than zero. So we're outputting an R1. All right, so if we follow the output signal on the green wire to the arithmetic combinator, what we're doing here is we're taking the output signal, R1, 
and the red signal from here excuse me the red signal is coming from coming from here from our one red signal over here all right so we're outputting the one red signal that we get multiplied by R equals one red signal as our output which is then attached to our train stop and this is set to send to train okay so we're not turning off the station or anything like that we're sending that signal to the train okay so if we go down here and follow this through we're getting input of one red and one green we're sending that green over here we're getting the input of a green one and the red is less than one so we're going to output one red signal so that output goes back over to this combinator here okay so we're getting a green from the signal and a red from this combinator so we have a decision whether or not we are greater than one and in this case we are not we're getting only one red signal we're not greater than one so we are not outputting a one here all right however this one is looking for a signal greater than zero all right and again would be multiplying that by the R1 if we had it, which we do not. So again, if we look over here, we're getting input green one, no input. Over here, we're getting no input. Okay, so again, with no input, we're getting no output either. So this train station is not getting a signal. So if we zoom out a little bit and um, we'll send this train to that station uh, if we're quick and you look on the right hand side there we should be able to see the R1 and this one the two all right I'm gonna do it again so we'll look at this side we'll get the two this time so we'll we'll keep our mouse over on that one as soon as we have a train to send Sorry, I didn't get there in time. But when this one has the one and the train pulls in here, this one is going to get the two. And as soon as it gets the two, our circuit condition on the train here is wait until circuit is red signal equal is greater than or equal to two. So as soon as it sees that second red signal, that train leaves to the next station. So in this case, uh, packs two from this is pack three so from here it'll go to four the next one will go to five and then back to one so let me just make sure all these trains have settled down now and i will send it kind of through the loop i'm going to skip packs two since that's on the other side of the map i'm just going to go three four and five so if we go to three if we're on this train and we pull in here this train will leave that station and it'll come down to this station. Once this one gets here, this one will leave and go down to the next station. When this gets here, it's gonna go back up to the first station, PAX 1. And so that's how it keeps a train available at every location, no matter where you take a train to. So now, of course, these would normally be much more spread out. It's not very useful to have them right next to each other um, but if you can imagine on a map with outposts that are you know a five or more minute run north and then from your main base and then another five another uh, outpost that's five minutes running south from your main base uh, this could really kind of save you a lot of time in running back and forth between your your points and where you have to do your maintenance and uh, making sure that your bottlenecks are, are getting straightened out. So I hope this uh, was 
interesting for you and that you're able to um, kind of learn something from it instead of just stamping down a, a blueprint and not knowing really how it works. Um, this was um, not really my design. I don't want to take credit for it, but um, I thought it was important, at least for me, to know where everything went and why it went there before I was using it. I didn't want to just stamp down that blueprint. If you have any comments or questions, please put them below and I will uh, do my best to answer them. I'm not a circuit expert. I'm just learning kind of as I go. So if you have in-depth and complex questions, I very well may not have the answer for you, but if I can figure it out, I would love to do so. Have a great day.